the last session of Connect Season 3 2017. Well done if you've been to all the studies. Well done for making it this far. Uh, I, I hope that uh, by now you've so much in your tank that you need another tank uh, to hold all that God's doing. Um, it really is fantastic and to know that people's lives are being touched and being changed by being together midweek, encouraging each other, praying for each other, and studying, and more importantly, applying God's word to their lives. So tonight we're looking at vision, uh, keeping our vision tank full. So important that we keep the vision tank full. So easy to lose vision in the world that we live in. Uh, sometimes our, our vision can get squashed or crushed or obscured by all the stuff that we have to do day and daily. We can lose sight of the bigger picture. We can begin to focus on uh, the stuff that's happening around us uh, when all the time God wants us to keep a big vision and to, uh, to keep dreaming big dreams for him and for his kingdom. Tonight we're going to look at Philip, Philip the evangelist. He was a, a man of vision and you might not necessarily associate Philip with vision. In fact, Philip is probably one of those unsung heroes of the New Testament. We read about him, but he doesn't have the same kind of profile as, as Paul or Peter or John or even Barnabas or Stephen. Uh, he's probably a, got a little bit more of a low profile uh, than some of those other outstanding leaders. But Philip was a visionary. In fact, Philip was somewhere, someone who went uh, places that, uh, that the, the apostles had never been. Uh, he went ahead, he went ahead in his evangelistic ministry. Philip first uh, comes to our attention in Acts chapter six, uh, when the church is uh, looking for seven men who are full of the Holy Spirit and full of wisdom. Philip's one of the people that's chosen and chosen to oversee, I suppose you could call it the Jerusalem food bank. Um, he's full of the Holy Spirit. There's obviously something really good and something wholesome that's going on in his life. People recognize that, uh, that God's really at work in Philip's life. Um, but not only that, he's a, he's a practical guy too. He, he knows how to get things done. He knows how to make things work. Uh, he knows how to solve problems. And it's for those two reasons that he's chosen. He's, he's full of the Holy Spirit and he's full of wisdom. You know, sometimes we need to see God in those appointments that maybe don't look so important as um, being an apostle or going on a mission or doing some of the more upfront things. Pete Philip's vision um, was such that he recognized the call of God when he was chosen and to serve in this very, very important and very practical ministry. Um, and that vision was fueled because he was full of the Holy Spirit. It was fueled by the Holy Spirit. Uh, what was going on in his life uh, was what caused him to see God at work. But Philip um, didn't uh, remain uh, serving food in the church at Jerusalem because he began to see opportunities that perhaps no one else in the Jerusalem church saw. And this becomes evident when uh, we read about Philip going down to Samaria. You, you might remember that in Acts chapter 7, Stephen is martyred for his faith. And the consequence of that, uh, the result of that is that the church is scattered. Uh, loads of believers leave Jerusalem and they take the gospel with them. And Philip's one of those uh, that leaves Jerusalem and he goes to Samaria. Now, I, I guess that Philip could have reached Samaria and thought, oh, you know, I wish I was back in Jerusalem. Uh, Samaria is not a good place for me. I have a great Jewish heritage. I don't want to be here. I want to be somewhere else. I, I want to be serving God back in Jerusalem. But Philip's not like that because what he does is he begins to preach in Samaria. Uh, he begins to preach the gospel and he sees signs and wonders following his ministry. See, Philip not only had a vision for ministry back in Jerusalem, he had a vision that enabled him to see 
an opportunity in Samaria, perhaps when no one else saw that opportunity. In fact, he, he was really ahead of the apostles because um, they had to bring the apostles, Peter and John, up from Jerusalem to lay hands on the people to be filled with the Holy Spirit uh, after Philip had preached the gospel in Samaria. But Philip's vision was such that he wasn't just uh, restricted to operating in one particular field of ministry. Um, he's already had a change from uh, being part of the food bank in Jerusalem to preaching to crowds in Samaria. But right at the height of the revival, uh, God calls him to walk away and uh, to, to take a different road. And the next time we find Philip, towards the end of Acts chapter 8, he's uh, walking along a road on his own, and then uh, he sees this guy in a chariot who just happens to be a very, very high-ranking official from Ethiopia. And the Holy Spirit says to Philip, go up and talk to him. And, of course, Philip goes up to this Ethiopian, and he starts to talk to this African man and uh, shares the gospel with him and the next thing the man gets converted and Philip baptizes him and then Philip's off somewhere else again. I think part of being a visionary is, uh, is and having a, a full vision tank is to realize that God isn't restricted and our ministry is not necessarily restricted to one given context or one given situation. Philip could go from serving at tables, serving food, to preaching to crowds and healing the sick, to walking along a road and talking to one person, witnessing to one person. Because Philip's vision tank was full, he was able to see what others couldn't see. I don't know if you think of yourself as a visionary or if you think your vision tank's full or your vision tank's empty, but one thing I would encourage you to do is just to ask God to help you to see what perhaps others can't see, or perhaps what you can't see at the moment. Sometimes we look at the world around us, we look at the situation we're in, and we think, oh, God couldn't work here. I'm sure many people were tempted to think that about Samaria. But sometimes we just need to stop and say, God, what are you doing here? What do you want me to do here? What, what do you want me to see here uh, that I can't see at this moment or that others can't see? The next time that we meet Philip after Acts chapter 8 is in Acts chapter 21. And uh, we're told that Philip is a family man and that he has four daughters. And they're described as four daughters who prophesied. And they have prophetic gifts. Now, I don't think it means that they just sort of woke up in the morning and prophesied from morning to night, went to sleep, and then prophesied day after day after day. I think what uh, what Luke means when he records this about Philip's daughters is that they had strong prophetic giftings. Despite the fact that Philip was clearly a very busy man and, and God had taken him to different uh, parts of the country to preach the gospel, somehow um, his family didn't miss out. Uh, I don't know what arrangements Philip had with his wife. Um, I don't know uh, how they uh, divided the labor between them and whether uh, she was the one who looked after the girls and their spiritual well-being or uh, I don't know what their family arrangements were but we do know one thing um, that there was a, a real sense of God's presence in their family and in their household and I've no doubt that Philip's prayers and encouragement and and leadership in his home contributed to that you see, when we have a vision for God, we don't neglect our families. We don't overlook our families. Sometimes our family is the easiest thing to overlook because sometimes our family situations can be hard situations. Sometimes it's in our families that we find the most rejection or even the most hostility to the gospel. But I believe that God wants us to have a vision for our families. You know, you might have brothers, sisters, children, uh, mom or dad or wider family circle uh, who aren't walking with God at this time. I want to encourage you tonight, like Philip, to have a vision for your family. Uh, could, could you see uh, your family being saved? Could you see the members of your family being filled with the Holy Spirit? 
Could you see your kids prophesying? Could you see uh, your aunts and uncles, your mum, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, just full of the Holy Spirit and on fire for God? I think that's the kind of vision that God wants us to have, that, that we're able to see uh, what others can't see, that we're able to see beyond what's happening at the present, that we're able to see beyond present circumstances and begin to pray into it and begin to pray that, that God would just touch our families and our extended families very, very powerfully. You know, when I, I first came to Glasgow, my heart was uh, for household salvation. And that's still something that's very important to me, to see whole families saved, to see whole families filled with the Holy Spirit, worshiping Jesus and following him. So I pray tonight that as, as your vision tank fills up, that it won't just be uh, for the church or for the city or even for the nation or the nations, but that you will get an incredible vision for your family and that you will have fresh faith to see your family saved and that you'll have a vision for household salvation. I trust, I pray, and that as you read about Philip and as you reflect and meditate on these things and encourage each other, and that your vision tank will be filled up, filled to overflowing once again.